Hello and welcome, my name is Harry Rivera and today on our DTF series we're going to do a, a conversion kit on our XP15000. Um, this is going to also include an external waste tank, so I'm going to guide you guys through the process of doing the external waste tank, um, doing, removing the rollers for the DTF conversion um, and, and all that. However, I already unboxed the printer to speed up the, the video, so just make sure that you have your stock um, inks already put in there, that you already did the initialization, that you already um, did the alignment of the, of the print head and did all the startup normally that you're going to do on a, with a printer and that's what we're going to go ahead and start so anyway without further ado let's go ahead and let's get started all right now with the print head um aligned and everything done um what we're going to do is we're going to be removing this this roller right here as you guys can see go to to this first screen right here which is maintenance so you select that one all right, and then we're gonna go to printhead cleaning. So we're gonna go down one printhead cleaning. And then what it's gonna do is um, it's gonna move this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the power as soon as this one moves to be able to unlock it. So we go to printhead cleaning. And then what we're gonna do is, again, we're going to remove the power as soon as we see that printhead move more to the left. Put pressure here to move it to the left or to the right. I'm trying not to grab it um, here because it, it kind of binds it. And if you see, I push and it, it doesn't go. It actually binds the printhead and it doesn't let it move. So when you move it, you want to move it always as far back as, on the carrier uh, as possible, okay? So we're going to grab our flathead. We're going to go on an up motion, remove this cover. Now that's going to give us access to our waste tank. We're going to grab our Phillips um, screwdriver right in here. I'm gonna to try to point out. So right in here, that screw that I am touching right here is what we're gonna remove, okay? And we're going to do the same right in here. All right, so that's it right there. You're gonna see um, a little metal clip and a screw. So we're gonna be removing that on both sides. I am going to be lifting this side. Um, and I'm going to break pretty much the plastic and bend the piece of metal. So, um, also there is a spring there. Forgot to mention that. So this, this little spring right here, um, is keeping it down. So that part, um, you can either just pull it up, just pull it straight up. Um, so now we're going to grab this and we're going to bend it until, until we break it. And when you bend it, that's how much you want to be able to remove. All right, so now that we did that, um, we're gonna grab this metal tab and we're going to flatten it out and just pretty much straighten it out. There's this, this tab right here. Just right there and lay it flat, okay? Um, and then you go this way. Now, don't be afraid because your print head is literally um, pretty much from the gray to half of the yellow. This square right here is where your print head is at, all right? So this portion right here is nothing but plastic on the bottom. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna scratch the print head, okay? Your print head is here. So um, pretty much anywhere where these rollers are and anywhere that those rollers are is, is, is a free game. Um, just be careful not to damage the plastic. But you are not gonna damage the print head, okay? So, and then now same thing on this side. We're going to lift up. And you're gonna hear you're gonna hear those those clips um, go, and there's a spring right here that is gonna come out right here on this corner. That spring is gonna come out. So what I do is I put my finger here so it doesn't fly out, and then I just pull straight up. And now I lift and I bring it out straight up. All right. The other thing is I want you to see the tab. So this plastic tab right here. It goes on, on, on pretty much a groove, and that's what's holding it on place. So that's what we had to do on this side. So this side, if you see this one, we flatten this side out to allow us to just have that straight pull, because if not, it has to go straight up, and you don't have a space because of the brand head. So that one, you always have to break it. Um, the way that this is actually in there, I'm going to try to bend it back. So now, as soon as you see it, see? So now that's how it actually was originally inside the print head. All right, and then what we did is pretty much that piece of plastic, and now we broke this off, right? 
And then now we grab that piece of metal and we flatten and straighten that out as much as possible to allow us to pull it, pull it straight out. All right. So now um, to remove this side cover that I have right here, to remove that side cover and access where we're gonna be doing um, everything, I need to remove this piece of plastic right here. So if we remove this Phillips screw right here, so just remove this right here. Now what we're gonna do is this side, we're gonna lift this corner up a little bit. So right here, we're gonna go up and then the baby comes out, All right? We're gonna be removing this Phillips right there. All right, so now that we removed that, okay, all we gotta do is slide back and this comes up, okay? I'll drill a hole right here, right on top of the power wire. That way my waist, tent, well, my waist um, hose is gonna come out through the back. So this line right here is your waste tank, okay? So this comes from here and it goes into your um, waste tank inlet and then that goes into your waste tank, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this, okay? Um, now that we're off, we're gonna grab a little flathead and give it a nice, nice push out. And we already drill our cover. Um, See if, if you guys can have a good view of that. So we drilled a hole right on top, right on top of that power cable. That's it right there. So this is this is how much I'm gonna be using to, to reach the outside of the printer. So I already have these connectors. I will be putting them um, on a link below. So these, these will um, give you a perfect fit for that hose. And also this hose is the perfect size for that. Um, so that hose, you will see it on, also on my on, on a link below. So now here, what we're gonna do is we're going to route this hose behind this metal. So usually what I do is again, I grab my little pick, right? And I'm going to put that hose here through the back. Now I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna push forward, bring it to me, and then now I can route it. So now I can pull very easily, there you go. And now I have my hose. If you wanna put a wire tie, if you wanna grab the little the little clamp that I have in my hand right now, put it here and then you know put your connector and put the clamp. Um, it's up to you, you have plenty of space. Now I can tell you it is not gonna come out. Um, so feed this through here, okay? So we're gonna feed it through um, this little plastic cover for the for the power and we're gonna go through there and then we're just gonna pull it straight so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of tape right here and we're just gonna hold that hose right there when you're putting these covers back um, what you got to make sure is that you are right here on this line we're going to feed our hose so we're just gonna pull that through we're going to just um, make sure that this is a line, right? This baby is gonna go right there on the clip. It's a line here on the bottom. There's another clip right here. So here, clip, here, clip. You're gonna make sure that they go in and after they go in, you're just gonna push forward and that's in place, okay? Now we can make sure that this baby's snug, okay? And that's it. That's as much as I leave because then what I do is then I put another connector and then I go ahead and run my hose to my tank. So now we're just gonna do reversal. And then we're just gonna go right here on the back. Go in, perfect. Now we're gonna put our screw here, our screw here. And we're done. Our external waste tank is complete. A little little piece of hose that, that has been used already. So then what I'll do is like I said, um, I'm gonna go here and then I go ahead and, and splice, put the splice right there. And now I can I can use this hose and, and bring it to, to my tank. Um, and then do do anything, you know, you can go as long I have them. I mean, I, I had them before where literally it runs behind the desk and to the floor and to somewhere completely away, um, you know, but also accessible because when you want to clean your cap, I will show you guys in another video, um, you want to have access to that.
All right, so now that we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn this printer on. The printer's never ready until this stops blinking. When you have a solid ring light, that's when the printer did all the tests and it passed all the tests, there's no codes, and then you're good to go. So now you can see that, that solid light, that means that we're good. That we're good. So now if we go up and we hit um, on, our, on our status for our inks, it's gonna give us our inks, because we haven't done the, the chipless software yet. If you guys see, we are going to be tracking that right there okay don't don't ever let it get near 15 percent. so as soon as you see that baby on half you're going to remove the um cartridge okay and we're going to reset um because if we let it get too low then we're going to have to lose that tank so you're going to have that error code right there um and then you're going to use your chip resetter right here we go over with our pins and then we are going to touch this. That was not good. There we go. So this has been reset. So now that we have been reset, okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this um, waste tank back in and we're just gonna click next. Done. And as you can see, waste tank, it's 100% again. Also, um, you're gonna do that to reset your ink. If my ink levels are too low, remove your waste tank, reset it, put it back, click OK. That's gonna bring all your levels back to back to the top. So right now, because we have uh, we haven't done the firmless um, the 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 firmware update for the chipless, you're still seeing the stock inks. However, when we do that chipless. Every time you reset your waste tank, it's gonna reset your, your inks also. So you don't have to keep doing the replacing cartridges. Why? Because when you do replacing cartridges, it's going to do almost a printhead cleaning. It's not at the extent of the printhead cleaning, but that's exactly what it does. It's trying to push the air um, of these out. It's doing an, uh, an initialization. So I'm sorry about my, my um, really bad pronunciation, um, but Spanglish. So, um, so that's what it's going to do, and then you're going to be wasting ink. So don't waste a lot of ink. Reset your, your waste tank. Save, that's going to save you a lot of ink. All right, guys. So from here, we're going to do the chipless firmware. I'm not going to do this step by step, but pretty much what I do is I go to inkcheck.net, follow the instructions. Pretty simple, explanatory, um, easy to follow. Now, the one thing I do want to mention um, is before we go ahead, um, we want to make sure that we install the drivers, that we go to epson.com and that we download just the drivers. There's a lot of people that download the whole packet. I just want to, I, I like doing the drivers and that's it. Um, now, if if your drivers are not correct, the best way to do is go to your start. Um, you go to your printers and scanners. Um, from there, find your Epson X XP15000. Um, you're going to click on Manage. Um, you go to Printing Preferences. And if you see something like this, where it, where it looks kind of like just small and tiny, um, you don't have the drivers installed. Now, if it looks like this, you do have it installed. And what you want to do is you go to Maintenance, you go to Extended Settings, and you're going to remove the Enable Epson status so it won't stop you from printing midway. That is something that you always have to do on these printers. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to mess up with your, um, with your software. And I always uncheck Reduce Print Data and everything. I just uncheck everything. I never had an issue. So that's just one thing that you want to do. All right, guys. So here we go. Um, just going to be a quick one on on this step. Um, all we're going to do is going to stop the firmware updates. That way you don't get messed up. So we are going to um, go into settings, um, and we're going to go all the way down until it says firmware update. Okay, and notification we're going to go off. It's just that simple. Okay. Um, so then that way you don't risk um, doing an update and then losing your your chipless. Um, firmware all right so there you have it guys the pretty straightforward conversion kit um very easy to do very accessible it's very easy on the newbie or that person that is just getting into dtf so i'm going to be posting a couple of things later on i'm going to be adding some more things for the xp 15000 into my channel how to do maintenance a couple of tricks hints and, and what to do what um what things to do what not to do um however a very straightforward conversion kit thank you for watching hope that you guys enjoyed it um it, please give me any comments any feedback you guys got any issues with the 50 uh, 
XP15000, just let me know. Put, put down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.